Hi there and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to continue in our education of estimating structural steel. Now last week we looked at how to perform a material takeoff, but that's only part of the equation. So today we're going to dive into how to perform a labor takeoff. So stay tuned. Now last week we went over the several steps and processes to performing a material takeoff, beginning with Meisen Plus. And today we're going to start at exactly the same place. Now Meisen Plus is a French culinary term that means everything in its place. And to me, it means nothing more than making sure that you have the current and complete data sets before you, before you begin your review, to ensure that your takeoff is both complete and accurate. Now if you want to know more about Meisen Plus, I recommend that you watch last week's video on performing material takeoffs. Now let's take a look at what actually doing a takeoff on the labor might look like for you. Depending on the scale and resources and experience of your organization, you may already have established some standardized labor allocations for different assemblies, and these are going to be different for every single company. What I'm referring to is if you have fabricated assemblies that are either similar or repetitive within projects, your company may have already determined a baseline for what's an acceptable amount of time to process and fabricate those items. And some items that I've seen this practice used for include columns, carrier beams, also fill beams, and roof opening or mechanical frames. And in such case, you'd simply need to count the number of items or conditions that apply within the project, and then multiply that by your company's time studies to fabricate them. Probably the most common use of a standard denominator or multiplier to determine the time and cost to produce an item would be for rails and fencing. These items are usually priced off of the linear footage of each or total within a project. But even these can come in different designs that have different price impacts on them as well. As you can see in our example here, some rails have vertical infill pickets. Others only have a single mid-span rail. And additionally, you might have a rail system that has seven horizontal rails or those that at least follow the plane of the top rail. And this is going to differ based off of the code and application of these rails. And each one is going to have a different time and cost impact to your company. And that's going to change based off of the equipment and personnel that you have available to produce them as well. And certainly most erection steps and practices are priced off of quantity. Based off the number of columns you have to stand, the number of beams you have to hang, and the number of bolts you have to stuff, these are really good metrics to use to come up with the amount of time it's going to take you in the field to hang your building. However, a proper labor assessment is nowhere near as simple as just counting pieces and scaling lengths. It's just simply a starting point to give you an idea of what to expect. In order to complete the process and what we're going to spend the remainder of our time today reviewing, one must go over the details within the plan set to determine the additional time or degree of difficulty that's associated with the project. The immense benefit to having done your Meisen Plus in advance to doing your takeoff is you should already be intimately familiar with these details in their information, helping to ensure that your takeoff is both complete and accurate. Welcome back, and next we're going to go over doing detail reviews. Now details within plan sets express and convey important information that can have significant impacts on your project, price, and scope of work. So being familiar with their contents is critically important to bidding your job. And again, this is why having performed your Meisen Plus is such a good and important practice, because by doing so, it ensures that you took the time to become familiar with this information before you even bid your project. Now last week I suggested that while you were performing your takeoff and review that you start from the ground or your lowest level and work your way up. And today I'm going to follow that same progression. So if we flip through this plan set a few pages we can see that on here we start having some columns that are identified. And if I move over here to this area it shows this frame that's happening. 
So I'm going to click on the section view to see what that is. And I have some columns and beams and the structure identified within that. But again, I want to start at the foundation or the lowest level I have. So I'm going to follow the detail progression to this. Now, this actually doesn't tell me the information I'm looking for. It's a depiction of the column, base plate, and anchor bolts, but it doesn't give me material sizes, dimensions, or locations other than these half-inch plate washers that take place there. So I'm going to follow this back and see if I can't locate where that information is at, because I still don't know anything about the base plate to my column. Going back to this page, I see that there are more details referenced at that foundation location, and I'm going to follow that along to the next detail. And here I find some base plate and lower level column information. Now, if I was using standardized labor uh, times and costs, I probably would not have accounted for this column assembly accurately. Because the first thing that stands out to me here is this column is going to be full pen welded to the base plate, both at the web and the flanges with a backer. And that's not a typical column weld. Most likely it would have been an all-around weld with a fillet uh, that would have been undersized and would have been a lot faster than what this process is going to take here. Additionally, I would have underbid the material as well as the labor because this one has gusset stiffeners on either side of the flanges all the way to the edge perimeter of the base plate that again is not standard to a column. So I need to account for the material and the labor of applying the weld to this as well. Now finally, this note over here referring to the base plate, it tells me that it's an inch and a quarter thick by 20 inches square. And after that, it doesn't tell much more information about the base plate other than that it has four one inch anchor bolts. But I've made a cloud around this note and I've made a note to it saying that pursuant with the steel note number 13 on sheet S11, this plate needs to be ASTM A572 grade 50. Now, if I had not done my Mizen Plus, and if I had not made the review of these notes already, and if I didn't already have that information in my mind while going through this, I wouldn't have known that. Because sure enough, looking at the general notes for the structural steel down here, I can see that the plates that are greater than one half inch thickness shall be ASTM A572 grade 50. Otherwise, it's going to be an A36 plate. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't go through all of my notes and do all of my proper planning in Mizen Plus to make an understanding of this project. Now let's take a look at some more important detail information that can apply at column base plates or foundations. Continuing with our vertical progression through the columns, I've pulled this example to show how the different connections and levels of a column can have a significant impact on the material and labor associated with it. So this is a, a stair tower that we're looking at. And as you can see from the heading of each detail, there's the foundation plan, the level one plan, level two, and the roof or the level three of this stair tower. But this is all one stair tower. These are the different elevations to that. Now looking here at these columns at this grid line location, which is, let's see, B1 to 3, 1, and 3, 2. So these two columns here. This has this hollow triangle shown at the connection of this tube steel that's coming off of that. And over here in my key plan, or my, sorry, my plan legend notes, I can see that that delineates a non-frame moment connection according to this detail. Now that applies not only at the level one, it's also at the level two, and it's at level three. So there are three different times that's happening at those same grid lines. So if I do follow that along and take a look at this detail, I can see this is a typical HSS, I call it tube steel, this means hollow steel section beam to another one, moment connection. And this is showing me that at the, the beam, this is the horizontal level, this is the column I'm looking at, that I have to have continuity plates. And these plates are the full width of that column. Now in order to splice that through, these are actually going to be one, two, three different sections of that column, and all that's going to be full pen welded together and then ground flush all the way around. So this isn't just one height of a single HSS tube section. No, it's actually going to be spliced many times. These plates I need to have accounted for, and additionally, according to this note down here, the continuity plates, again, they need to be ASTM 572 grade 50 not just your standard A36. So in order to get my labor correct 
and in order to have even my material takeoff correct, I need to follow these details to know this information. Now, something that's not shown on this, it shows the plates and the tubes, but a backer plate would also need to be incorporated into this weld as well. Make sure that you get that. Now, from an erector's perspective, I also need to know that these are moment connections because this is going to require that I have full pen welds all the way around in the field. So I don't just have a bolted connection which can be hung up there and shove that bolt, get it to uh, get the holes to align, which is a really rather quick erection practice and process. Um, no, this is going to take much longer for me to accomplish that because I'm probably going to have to incorporate an angle seat to hold this beam at the correct level, which again is not shown on this detail. So I'll need to make a note of that and apply that material within the job to hold it here while I'm putting the root passes into the full pin weld of these and applying this weld and then grinding it flush in the field. So there is a lot of additional time that's associated with these columns and their fabrication and then in the field making the connection of the beams to them out there as well. And I would not have known that if I wasn't taking close note and attention of these details and following that track. Now the final example I want to give you takes place at the high roof framing plan of this particular project. Now if I'm going to follow this detail along that's around the perimeter, the edge of this, I can see from here that it's a W16 by 26 and this DO means ditto or it's going to be the same size in the same conditions, including this half inch camber applied at each one of these beams. And this detail applies along the edge perimeter. I can see that there's the beam coming in and it actually changes shape. It reduces in size as it protrudes beyond the CMU wall and then catches this channel fascia to the edge. I can see that it's a five foot offset from the outside of the wall to the very edge of that and that's important but it doesn't give me all the information of what's happening here. So if I follow along yet again to another detail at that beam pocket I can see more about what's happening here. I can see that it needs to be cut down and reduced in size. I can see here that it's going to have a 3 8 by 5 and a half inch plate that's going to be welded on to form the now bottom flange of the reduced section of this tapered beam and it's going to extend beyond. I can see the size of the fillet welds and that it's 2 inches on 12 inch center to center skip welds both sides of that. So again there's a lot more fabrication and detail information happening to this beam than what was just originally shown on the high roof framing area of this plan that I didn't initially see along the perimeter here. And I only obtained the knowledge and information of, of what's happening in this because I paid close attention and followed all of the information from the details within this project. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and then check out our website where you can subscribe to receive videos like this every single week, bringing you only the best in steel construction education. And while you're there, be sure to check out our list of courses, providing you a deeper and more intensive study on topics just like this one. You see here at the SBC Group, it's our mission to help you know the most so that you can do your best. And finally, if you should have any questions or concerns about where you're going to spend eternity and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with that too. Thank you and God bless.